Back because I'm on the radio now. Oh, don't worry about anything. I just thought you'd call. Whatever works for you, that's fine. Okay, I need to talk to you anyway, so I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. Bye. All right. Alright, good morning ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Free American Hour. I'm your host, I am Clay Douglas. And my guest today is B.K. Durham, who I affectionately call Grandma. How you doing, dear? Oh, I'm doing just fine. How are you doing? I'm doing well. A little bit cold today down here in Texas. We had a Blue Norther come in from, uh, sent it to us from uh, a bunch of you Yankees sent it, got together and sent it down here to us, I guess. You know, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Well, I don't know what to tell you here. I've got you on the one thing of paper, the, the one thing that uh, we always talk on, and uh, I'll look at the... Uh, there says there's an internet problem here, so hold on a moment. All right, it's back up. It should be working now. How's that? It should be working, Grandma. It seems to be sounding a little better now. All right, we had. Okay. All right, we had a, a little a glitch. We've been have this show has been blocked. It's been uh, taken off of the air. It's been they 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 really uh, they've been really screwing with it. I feel like I'm getting information out that they really don't want to hear, and maybe we're getting some answers here. Now we we got the information here about the gold, but I haven't been able to find any anything on the links that you sent me that shows. George Bush has smuggled a drug, or a gold out of this country. They have bought, the Bush family has bought land in Paraguay, has bought a hundred thousand acres in Paraguay, but uh, I haven't been able to determine whether they're just doing that, A, to escape the war crimes like the uh, Nazis did, like uh, uh, Hitler did, they can't well, do Paraguay, or whether or not he's down there trying to take over the water from the underground aquifer, or if they, if if 9/11 was a Bush-orchestrated gold heist and they stole enough gold to, um, you know, wouldn't be too much of a problem for an ex-president to smuggle a few tons out of the country. What what uh, what what insight do you have on this? And by the way, B.K. Durham here, who I call Grandma, has met with many of the world leaders, most of whom uh, they've turned on them and killed them, like Saddam Hussein and Muammar Gaddafi. You've met all of those people, haven't you, Grandma? Yes. Um, I think that uh, there's going to be a lot of answers in. Um, there's an audio that I sent to you that you need to post on your website that was done by um, uh, Steve Webb and Gordon Duff. It's a three-hour audio, and I was just talking to Ambassador Wanta about it, and they're rehashing the stuff that we already knew about, 
but they're bringing it all out into life. Now these are intel agencies, or agents that are bringing it out into life. And of course, here we've been so, you know, we've been putting it out there all these years, but now it's starting to really gain some momentum. And I, I think it would be uh, uh, at the pages for the people, if you would post this on your website, uh, once they get past all the commercials, they've got some good information in there. It's a shame they put all those commercials in there. All right, well, I'm going to try to have Gordon Duff on uh, tomorrow, and I'll certainly <laughs> talk to him about it. Stu Webb, I'm not, uh, I know Stu Webb, I've met Stu Webb, and frankly, I'm not very impressed with Stu Webb. Well, you know, I'm not getting into personalities. Uh, that's why this thing has been gone on as long as it has. Everybody's had to um, talk about somebody else. But and you know I me, mean, how many black guys I've had to take. Now you ask where the gold is. The gold was pretty well explained in an article that I spent, sent to you this morning on the quadrillion dollar derivatives bubble, and they're bringing that out to light. And they're um, they're saying that's close to 107 quadrillion dollars in these OTCs over the counter derivatives. Well, that's where all the gold is. It's in that backed by nothing uh, Las Vegas type game of derivatives that they've got out there. But there's there's not that much gold. The only legitimate gold is we have it all in. And but we do it. Ours is paper, but ours is legitimate paper. You know, it's it's not uh, stuff that's been thrown out there for a gamble, bunch of gamblers. You're you're talking about the uh, Durham Trust, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm surprised. They say that there's 107 quadrillion, close to 100 quad. Seven quadrillion in um, uh, those um, derivatives out there, and our see our um, ours was uh, calculated by the Central Intelligence Agency's Actuarial Services and and the West Coast Federal Reserve at roughly two hundred and seven quadrillion. Well, they were going to use exactly half of that. Uh, with this Ecker thing that went on, you know. But all of this is being exposed now. So... We even had the uh, the MSNBC, they pulled the story about the 43 billion or something like that. I'm sorry, you know, you, uh, say it again, please. They, they, the MSNBC pulled the story about forty three billion or something. They're they're looking for all kinds of money. I mean there was two point six trillion or two point three trillion dollars that disappeared from the that the Pentagon couldn't account for when Dove Zakheim was a uh, comptroller of the Pentagon. Well there not there is so much of this that it's just been floated off in paper. You know, that um they're gonna have to uh, we, of course, you know that we've had a, a resolution for this for so many years. Nobody wants to take and pay attention to it, and so that's. But that's up to them, you know. Uh, so what if I die? Then they're going to be stuck with with a conundrum that it's going to be a Gordian knot that they'll never solve. And you know, I think they deserve that Gordian knot. Because they all thought they were so much above the law. Well, is that the reason Bush is buying uh, uh, 100,000 acres down in Paraguay? Are they planning on high that? He bought that several years ago. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I don't think he's going to live to see it. He's looking pretty bad, George Bush Sr. Senior, I think he's in the hospital right now because there's an epidemic of CIA flu going around. Even Hillary is sick. Yes. So I, I, you got uh, Putin with problems. You got all of these 
big dudes with problems, and I think it's just an epidemic of CIA flu. Well, you're familiar with that because that's what happened to your husband, Russell, who oh, was yeah. involved, who, who was linked, in, in, uh, along with George Bush, to the Kennedy assassination. He, uh, You saw pictures of your husband standing outside the school book depository, didn't yes. you? Yes, yes I did. And what and did he say about I it? I mean, he, did, did he ever reveal to you what happened no. to Kennedy or who did that or no, did he keep The only thing that he ever said to me was if I knew what he had really done, he said, you would, he said, you would, you would kill me yourself, which I, I probably would. But uh, they did it now. Now, why did they go after your husband? He was one of them. He was a part of this. He was uh, one of the couriers along with uh, a few others in the Cotolo movement, uh, things he, like that. We've gone, through, we've gone through all of this before. He was the account holder. He had the accounts there at Republic National Bank in New York that held the $17.5 trillion in gold bullion. That everybody's been giving me hell trying to find. And, uh, you know, I, as far as I'm concerned, as long as this thing is as dirty and as crooked as it is, you know, hey. Yes? They can all kiss where the sun don't shine. They threaten me if I've got the number still from the camp. That I'm dead. No, I'm not dead. So quit threatening me, you mutton heads. And I do have the numbers. So, you know, don't threaten me. Uh, let me let me ask you, Grandma. You know, I know that uh, you've been uh, you've been moved into these nursing homes because people keep trying to get a hold or get uh, some connection with this gold or with this uh, trust. And and we're talking about billions of dollars, trillions of dollars, maybe. But uh, you don't have you you aren't you aren't benefiting from this. You don't have the money to. Even, uh, no, I haven't got two cents to rub together. And and my my question is, where is, how how could we how could this be put to the use that it's supposed no, to be used? We've, answered, Suppo we've talked about this so many times, Clay. Well, there's a lot of people that haven't heard it again, and I'd like to we've talk. It, it, you know, we just there's been so much that was in that estate. Two point four billion dollars per state that regained their tenth amendment sovereignty back. That came out of Russell's estate. Well, everybody dallied along, and they just didn't want to do anything, and they wouldn't take it to the secretary, to the treasurers of the states. So in 1997, I moved all of that over into the trust. I moved it all over into the trust. It no longer was a, a beneficiary status. Now, I've, you know, I've, I've been told and I've been abused by everybody and it's cruel. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm tired of being abused. I'm tired of being abused and I'm tired of you know, I'm tired of listening to people telling me, well, I don't care if you're a feisty wish murdered, I want my money. I want it now. Well, it's not to the individuals. It goes to the states to repair their bridges, their highways, there, and put their infrastructures back together again. Now, nobody listens. You and I did a tape recording on this. How long ago? At the safety net. Nobody paid any attention. Every Everybody just sits there with their thumb up their pennies and their brains in neutral and they want me to keep rehashing my husband's murder. Well, I'm tired of looking at that body in the open mouth and then what they did to him, the beating that they gave him. I'm tired of looking at that. Life goes on. Life does go on. And I'm tired of saying, hey, people, here, 
this is the way you come out of this. And I keep getting, well, what do you think about the Tenth Amendment? What do you think about, the, well, who in the hell do they think started it? So, you know, I, I, I do think it's wonderful that they're finally getting off their butts. But, it, again, we've got a bunch of people who are sitting there, they are sucking their thumbs, they don't even know what in the hell they're doing. But that's their problem, it's not mine. And I'm, I'm just tired of dealing with them. Now, uh, somebody on the chat room is saying, why is it no one takes her serious and they uh, try to uh, settle up with her? I mean, why... You, you have met these people at the high levels. Is, is the bank so powerful? The Federal Reserve? I mean, I've seen pictures of the gold in the Bank of England. I mean, that's where all the gold is. There are tons and tons and tons of gold sitting in the Bank of England. No, all the gold isn't there. Uh, is there anything in, uh, left in Fort Knox, or have they replaced that with titanium? No, yeah, somebody I, knows. I, I, I can only repeat what was told to me that I told to you. That one of Russell's people came in, they were in um, Nile together, and he said, Kind of Rusty, he says, You know what I've been doing since we left Nile? And Russell said, No, it's been done. He said, I've been guarding, I've been a guard down there at Fort Knox, I've been guarding nothing but, he said, I was supposed to be guarding gold, but all it is is cocaine and heroin in there. So. That's we, all I know. Okay, we just talked about that. Now, in my book, Mystery Babylon, I have certainly pointed out that George Bush, when he was CIA director, was in the drug business a big time. They, they were smuggling the heroin in from uh, the Golden Triangle. They were smuggling the cocaine in from Colombia through uh, Panama. And uh, you were probably aware of that, too, Operation Watchtower, Colonel Edward P. Cotolo. Oh, oh, sure. Right now, but, you know, there's got to be, this stuff has got to be moving forward. All we're doing is rehashing the same old stuff all over and over. All right, where do we go? Where do we go? Now, now the, the problem that we all have, as I can ascertain, with this, uh, they've taken a million homes from Americans, Iceland, <laughs> Iceland uh, bragged, uh, they said, you know, we did it a little differently. We bailed out the people and arrested the bankers, you know, so... That's that, what needs to happen here. Yes, ma'am. I certainly <laughs> agree with you about that. We do need to arrest the banker. They are our problem. Well, I came up this morning, and a certain individual out of seeking to that the reason why these individuals are going in the hospital is they've been threatened and they know that these hospitals are safe. That's their safe house. Not for <laughs> us. Uh, the hospitals are slaughter houses. They're better well, than... They, they're, okay, they're, I'm just telling you what was told to me. Okay. Now, when these top CIA officials uh, go in with colds and this and that something else, like George Bush, and he's still in there. Then he's been threatened. He's in there for safety. Well, how about uh, Forrestal being thrown out of I the... I don't know anything about it. I'm just saying okay. exactly what I heard this morning. So, you know. Okay. The... Do you know what I think is funny? What's that, dear? We're sitting... I'm sitting here reading an article. Uh, of Monday, 10th, December 2012. There's 17 U.S. warships now off of Syria. When paid terrorists and mercenaries can't do the job to bring in Terror King, the USA is the title. Shows a U.S. aircraft carrier Dwight D. Eisenhower arrived at the sh off the shores of Syria. The multi-purpose nu nuclear attack carrier, the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, is leading the naval assault group, which has arrived in the eastern Mediterranean. It is in a close proximity to the coast of Syria, on board the ship were 75 of bombers and a total of 8,000 U.S. servicemen. Uh, you know, this just, to me, this is all nonsense. They can't afford to do a war. They can't re afford to go in there and repair the damage that is done. And what in the hell are these fools doing? 
Can you tell me to do it? It's, uh, you know, the formula is you, you take our tax money, buy weapons from uh, yourself, uh, use it to bomb and kill uh, about a million civilians that never done nothing to us, and then we pay Brown and Root to go back in and rebuild everything that we just blew up. Looks like a racket to me. Well... <laughs> There's no money to pay it, no money to do it with. All the gold is bogus. They've got nothing but uh, paper derivatives out there. The OTC is backed by nothing. I can't believe all this. It's a, well, it, it's a Ponzi scheme. I mean, nothing else. It, it's a, it, it's, it's, yeah, it, I said there's two things I can't tell you. Does the did the government take over the mafia, or did the mafia take over the government? You know? In nineteen, in nineteen, I think it was forty two or forty four, for George Patton to get his uh, equipment off road there at Salerno, he they had to let the longshoremen and the teamsters into Treasury. So that puts your crooks and criminals in there. And of course they've been sending their sons to uh, Harvard and Yale to become part of the Skull and Bones, to become part of the uh, establishment, and to become lawyers. I mean, you know, maybe maybe in addition to arresting the banksters, uh, maybe we are to reinstate the 13th Amendment, the original 13th Amendment. <laughs> Well, what we need to do, and uh, you know, everybody looks at this and that and something else. You got to get zero in. When you, if you're going to kill out a a, <coughs> a cancer, you've got to get to the root of the damn thing and kill that. Now, part of this is getting all those non governmental offices and agencies out from operating this nation. You've got nothing but organized crime. They bought the Pentagon. They bought the, the military. They bought all the banks. They bought our highways. They bought our bridges. They bought our riverways. They bought our schools. They bought you name it. And the health care hospitals. They bought it all. Now, as soon and now I want you to know, when we paid that debt, the U.S. debt, six point five trillion, we paid it with the with the um, specific performance written in there, returning all that back to the people. Now, I've got something else to tell you. The governor of Iran Central Bank, Mohammed Bami, said that the country has enough gold reserves to last another 15 years. The official website of Iran's government reported. To protect the country's economy, Iran has increased its gold reserves by 12 times in the last five years. Uh, this came out on the uh, 24th of November this year. Just just now being made public. Uh, <clears throat> speaking of international sanctions affecting Iran's economy, Mani said that Iran has prevented a serious blow to its economy by having enough gold reserves, high oil prices, and reduced goods imports. We can't say that the sanctions did not harm us. They do. However, there was not a serious damage made to the Iranian economy. Well, they are selling their, their oil for gold to uh, Russia and China, aren't they? Well, see, that's what bankrupted the United States of her gold was uh, when this thing originally started and she was paying for the Saudi gold, they demanded it to be paid in gold. Buyable, cuttable gold. That's not the plea. And, and that's what was happening in Libya and Iraq, too. That's why they went in, not only to steal and to ransack the uh, museum in uh, Baghdad, but uh, to uh, to steal the gold. I mean, they, they got uh, the gold from uh, Gaddafi after killing him, didn't they? 
Well, they, they sold his gold. Uh, Stopper was doing wonders for his nation, as was uh, Saddam. Saddam was doing wonders. And historically, they were just, and he wasn't a badass. Everybody said he was. You know, of course, whenever you want to steal something, you always, know, look what the actors did to me. They, they always made me you know, heavy as they were out there scamming the world with those uh, derivatives that now cannot be collected. So Now, are they I, are they still the Eckers? These are the people that did Contact Magazine. These are the people that uh, started in on you at an earlier time. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the same people that were promoting uh, the Contact as being Dictated by a what nine foot tall alien? Oh, that's a twenty seven foot tall lizard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And people bought that. I mean, I know it. I know it. Oh, it's just it's it's a shame. Well, this, I was thinking this morning. Let me ask this you, is what happens. Okay, go this ahead. This is this is what happens when you de-educate the young. You don't have an educational stability, and then we'll believe a rat. A rat is a cat. You know, they don't. They've not um, learned. They've not been properly educated. Now we've got to go through all that all over again. We've got all this cultism going on, and it is just uh, unbelievable. And you know, quite frankly, I'm glad I'm the age I am. I wouldn't want to go through what these youngsters, because Russell said it. He said, if we don't get it straightened out, it'll be 200, 250 years before it straightens out again. When the elitists, when the banksters, and the lawyers, and the doctors all working for the banks, are working for the AMA, working for the various organizations, working for the uh, Masons, the Masonic Lodge, yeah, you know, they want to to break us. They want a million. They they are going after the middle class in America right now, and uh, they want this. They want this to happen. Uh, everything else, be afraid, be afraid, because uh, you know it, it's like Forrestal said before they threw him out of the thirteenth floor of the Bethesda Naval Hospital. You know, if they were just stupid, occasionally they'd make a mistake in our favor. So this is all engineers. It's been predicted for 2,000 years. It's been predicted in the protocols of the elders of Zion for how long? Uh, uh, move on. Move on. That's yesterday. Move on. Move on. You've got to get into the, right now, as your folks called, you've got to get to crack that nut and get into to the meat of the situation. Okay. Right now, we're, look at, we're looking at, we know about the other society. We know about all of that. We know about that bogus Federal Reserve. We know about all the crookedness that's gone on there. But now, we can't keep rehashing it. Then We've got to look the people, where the people have enough sense to understand what the hell went on. And they can move forward, get their hands out of off their butts, and their uh, uh, senses collected. And move forward and say, wait a minute, this isn't right. 